Last time we looked, um, we read from this number 51. Karma jambuddhi yukta hi phalam dhyaktva mani shinaha. Karma bandha vinir mukta phalam gachantya namayam. The fruit which is born from action, karma jambuddhi yukta hi Palam tyaktva, the, having left the fruit born from the action, but connected to buddhi, to the intention or to the higher purpose of life, manishinach, the wise man, janma bandhavinir muktach, becoming free from the bondage to the birth, liberated from the burn, bondage of birth, padam gachantyanamayam, go to the highest status. So we have to leave the fruit born from activity. Fruit actually does not belong to us. It belongs to nature. Nature is manifesting the divine here. Everything what we do here in this world belongs to that. We kind of contribute with our life uh, to that um, fulfillment. So it is not our fruit, by the way, by the very definition. It makes sense. And then, Yadate mohakalilam buddhir vyatita rishyati tadaganta sinir vedam shrota vyasya shrutasyacha. Last time we spoke about this and we dwelt on it. Uh, what it means, it means that uh, nothing will be any more attractive for you from the scriptures point of view, because you will live the scriptures, you will live the presence of uh, the divine within your life. Everything what you think, what you feel, what you act upon, how you see the, the world around you and yourself will be charged with its presence. So what's the point of reading the scriptures if the divine is already fully present within you? Shruti vipratipannate yada sthasyati nishchala samadhava chala buddhih tada yogam avapsyasi. And when your thought, free from any dogma or any knowledge which you may acquire through mental thinking, will stop and become one pointed, then you will arrive at yoga. Arjuna Uvacha, Arjuna said, Sthita prajna siya kabhasha, samadhi sthasya keshava, sthita dhih kim prabhasheta, kim asita vrajeta kim. And Arjuna asks, uh, of the one whose intelligence or whose higher consciousness is steady, what is his speech? How does he speak? of the one who is constantly in samadhi, in the highest concentration, whose mind is one-pointed and immobile, does not fluctuate, concentrated. Kim prabhasheta, how does he speak? Kim asita, how does he sit? Vrajeta kim, how does he walk? And the answer is quite interesting. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Prajahati yada kaman, if one leaves all the desires, sarvan kaman, opartha, manogatan, those which came into your mind, atmani eva atmanatushtah, happy by oneself within oneself, sthita prajna stadochyate, then he is called sthita prajna, or steady in wisdom. <clears throat> Only the one who is established within himself or happy within himself by himself. That is the sthita prajna. 
So he doesn't say to him how he walks, how he sits, how he talks. He doesn't answer to his question. Sri Aurobindo makes fun of it because Arjuna wants to, to see it objectively there and to recognize, ah, oh, this is behaviorism, you know, like he behaves in this way, that means that he is this. But that is the only thing which we cannot see uh, because the person, liberated person, can be very ordinary outside and his life can be quite ordinary. And nobody would be able to see that he is extraordinary within, within his perception. Sri says that it is impossible to see with outer eyes that inner fulfillment. One can imitate it, that's another question. One can play it like, like in a theater, you know. But one cannot see it with outer look. Um, oops, something has happened, wait a minute, jumped away. Sorry, just... Vladimir, we are looking, when you said people can play it, you have these serials on Indian television on the Mahabharat and the Absolutely. Ramayana, you know, the actors playing, you know, the roles, you know. So. There are also players in life. There are many gurus right, right. who try to imitate the state of, you know, wisdom and calm, and they become calm. You can really imagine yourself being calm, yeah, and being. Um, how to say, you can convince yourself to be, to behave in that particular manner. By the way, all this consultancy, if you look at this, how they are teaching <laughs> businessmen how to behave, you know, they teach them how to stand, how to speak, our body language, how you have to fool others <laughs> that you are somebody else, you know, through your behavior, just show yourself differently. They will trust you and then you take advantage of them <laughs> because you are not that guy <laughs> anyhow. So <laughs> you will just pretend to be, yeah. So there is the whole psychology developed on this ground to pretend to be, fake it till you make it. I heard this often. Yeah? Um, and I'm not sure that it is really applicable to this particular thing, <laughs> what we are talking here about. You can't make it by faking it. Maybe one day you can even that do, I do not know. Maybe one can do that also. There is a, a very funny story in Panchatantra about somebody who pretended to be Vishnu. <laughs> it is a really funny story. Maybe you heard about it. Uh, he pretended to be Vishnu because he fell in love with princes. So his friend, uh, built for him a flying machine and he said you fly in the night to her balcony to the prince's balcony and announce yourself as vishnu and he was just a ordinary poor guy living in the city so they put on him some you know some clothes and with that flying machine he came to, to the princess and announced himself as vishnu no she fell in love with him and they were meeting every night and so he was very happy with development and then uh, he uh, the king found out that uh, his daughter is meeting secretly with vishnu <laughs> that's a big thing you know <laughs> So, and he was also very, um, very happy with this. But then uh, the war happened and the army came and kind of uh, surrounded the, the kingdom. And then father came to his daughter and said, you see, Vishnu is with you. So <laughs> call for Vishnu's help. <laughs> he has to come and help us, you know. He is your suitor in a way. <clears throat> so she, uh, asked him, so you see, we have the army attacking us and you are on our side. Can you please come and destroy the army of the enemy? <clears throat> 
So he went to his friend and said, now what shall we do? You see your flying machine, so what shall we do? He said, you have no, nothing to do but to continue to pretend to be Vishnu. <laughs> So he went there and he said, okay, let me face the army. <laughs> and he went to face the army alone. And Vishnu in the sky, in heaven, <clears throat> saw all that and said, what is this pretender? He will be killed here by the army and they will think that Vishnu was killed. So he entered into him and destroyed all the armies. <laughs> This is the story from <laughs> the really, really good story. <laughs> so, and then they married happily and the king was very happy. <laughs> it's only in India possible such a story. <laughs> you can't find it anywhere else. <laughs> to be unrealistic till the end and let it become real. <laughs> so here, um, yes, um, we are talking about fake it till you make it. Yeah. And then, Duch Keshu Anu Dvigna Manach, Duch Keshu Anu Dvigna Manach, So Keshu Vigata Sprihach, Vita Raga Bhaya Krodhach Stita Dhir Muneruciate. So the description of the Muni, whose Dhih, whose concentration is steady, is of the one whose krodha and bhaya and draga, whose desire, fear and um, anger are gone, vita. He has neither desire, nor anger, nor uh, fear. Who is, uh, who has no uh, spriha, spriha, uh, has no hopes, uh, uh, expectations rather, whose expectations are gone, in uh, good or bad, whose mind is not tormented in good, whose mind, whose expectations are gone in, uh, in happiness. So in whatever state he is, he has no expectations, neither expectations nor uh, shrinking. Um, this is a typical description of the realized person. And then, Yaksarvatrana bhisnehach tat tat prapya shubha shubham nabhinandati nadveshti tasya prajna pratishthita. The one who everywhere, Sarvatra, anabhisnehach, who in all things is without affection. I would say not affection, without. Uh, the word affection is a good word, uh, without preference for affection. Yeah? Uh, though visited by this good or this, wait a minute, I can't see, I want to see your faces and at the same time the text. I can't do both, so I have to shift it. Okay, he who whose mind is undisturbed in the midst of sorrow and amid pleasures is free from desires, from whom liking and fear and wrath, wrath have passed away is the sage of settled understanding. That's what we read. And then the next, Yaksarvatra Anabhisneh, who in all things is without affection, though visited by this good and that evil, tat tat prapya, having gotten this or that, shubha shubham, evil or good, uh, 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 and neither hates nor rejoices, nabhinandati nadveshti, his intelligence sits firmly founded in wisdom. His wisdom is firmly established. Vladimir, uh, hmm. would would that fit Chiramindo's uh, concept of equality? Absolutely. Equality Absolutely. of consciousness. Absolutely. This is all about equality and equanimity. It's to be equal among enemies and among friends. This is something 
we can find somewhere in literature, for example, Jesus was like this. He was not preferring somebody to somebody else. Right. He was accepting everyone. He can uh, go into everybody's house who is welcoming him. There was no uh, kind of uh, preference for him. I think that in the same way, Shirobindo and Mother had attitude towards all of us. And right. that is something what is touching us, yes? We were not judged by them from the point of view of the mind. Even if we are not worthy of their presence, they received us as, uh, as souls who need help. Can I give a short example? Yes, please. With the there was a period uh, youngsters used to write a daily diary to the mother, you know, but what we did wrong, what have you know, what we did during the day. The only thing she did was correct our spelling if we had made a mistake in spelling and her blessings. That was it? Not, oh, you shouldn't have done this or don't do this again. None of those. Just correct the spelling and her blessings. You know. It's very interesting. interesting. Yeah. Because for her, it was important to to be that you become part that you make her a part of your life right right and that was enough already because then next time you will do better uh, automatically without really even thinking without being judged you would you would know that you would write to the mother and she will not judge you and uh, and by the way somewhere she also says about this that uh, the Many people come to me and they offer only the best what they have. But the real sadhaks, the real uh, people uh, who are meant to do this yoga, are those who come and offer their difficulties, their, um, uh, their darker sides, they offer for transformation. Yeah? We usually don't want to bring darker sides to yeah. the mother. Yes, We want to come in celebration with her presence. We don't want to show ourselves as being incapable or... In as we are talking earlier, we try to fake it. Yeah, oh, right. Or fake it or hide it or something. Right. Uh, yeah. But uh, the real sadhaks are those who offer exactly those difficulties, because then they can be transformed and changed. So the, necess the necessity is to develop closeness to the divine and a, a true intimacy with the divine. And as Lakshman was saying, you know, if, if the mother had corrected or, or criticized it or judged in any way, and as you observe, Vladimir, of course, that, that, that then there would be no opportunity to develop that intimacy. I mean, we can all remember like our parents and mm -hmm. <laughs> being corrected as children, then mm -hmm. you don't want to divulge what you did wrong the next time. Yeah, if you hide you, it. Yeah. You hide it, exactly. So in developing this openness and trust, mm -hmm then the intimacy is there, which is, as you said, you know, helps the divine to become a full part of your life. Right. It's more for the, for, for the disciples necessary than for the mother. Uh, yeah. Much more for them. You know, they, when they communicate to her, they connect to her. And that is already a big step forward. Yeah, to trust her, to trust her in every doings, the, to see the, her help, to see how things change when you do it. Yeah. And there's somewhere also she speaks about this, how beautiful it would be if uh, we could be inspired by offering everything what we have, think, feel to the divine. Oh, this thing I never offered, or I never offered uh, drinking of tea, or I never offered by sitting at, in, in this chair, or I never offered this particular minutest shift of thought or feeling. Yeah, I never offered it. I never felt the divine present within me while I'm doing this ordinary action. So if we start doing it, we, our life becomes uh, very different. Yeah? It will become charged with the presence. That reminds me of the story of, of Udar, where mother told him, 
to brush his teeth with her, mm -hmm. you know, to, to offer everything. Mm -hmm. And even as you observe these very simple, ordinary things of, of daily life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, this is an amazing thing if we have that contact. Once we have that contact and we could really mm, produce that connection in every simple activity, we don't need any anything to study. This is it. This is the end of the. This is the means, as Shobindo says. Mother is everything is in her. If you reach her, you reach to everything. You realize all. So, um, if she could be present, I mean, the Shakti consciousness force yeah? present in every activity in every feeling mind uh, thought and um, turn of events uh, and fresh look or old look whatever uh, it will be charged with her presence or with his presence krishna's consciousness what krishna says give everything to me think only about me love only me in everything i will deliver you from all the troubles from all the dualities because this is the delivery actually that is the freedom but of course we are we have other motives within us desires all kind of cherished guests and uh, live within us who are demanding a share from our life for themselves. We don't even know what they are doing there, but we are used to them. We think that we are them, but we are not. We just, we are hijacked by other forces which are kind of using us for their own purpose. If we offer even our desires to her, like we talked about that we offer everything to her, good or bad, you know, what that is, if we offer the desire, uh, she is there for us and she yes. will, if we have that inner faith, you know, she's going to correct us, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Desires, all the ordinary movements of consciousness have to be offered to her. And that is, uh, that is the, that the touch, her touch will change everything into gold. That desire right. will change into pure aspiration for the divine. And once it is growing in you, you don't want anything but that. And that's yeah. another kind of thing. Yeah? So you know that by all this ordinary means, you can increase in yourself the deeper and higher and more luminous consciousness. What can be better for life? You are no more troubled. You don't look for the results to get for your desires to be realized. Your desires are already realized by the presence of, um, of that light. Uh, that was also the case when people were coming to the mother with, you know, with the list of things to do, to explain. <laughs> and they come there and then they go into this atmosphere and they forget everything. You know, and then, then come out, they, everything, all those of that list of things to do, everything is already resolved <laughs> by the very presence of consciousness. You know? No more problems anymore. It's quite interesting how they describe this, how many times with lists they went to the mother and they couldn't even read because everything was already solved by the very presence. Uh, yes, so number 58. Yada samharate chayam kurmonga niva sarvashach indriyan indriyarthebiyach tasya prajna pratishthita. So when he withdraws his limbs like the tortoise from the how to say how I like tortoise withdraws limbs he withdraws the senses from the object of sense then his wisdom is being established firmly founded in wisdom um, this is pratyahara known as pratyahara in uh, in Yoga Sutras, you know, yes, that you withdraw the senses from the object of sense. 
and then you become free. You can choose what you want to think, what you want to do. You are no more determined by those investments or those strings attached, which are kind of pulling us like a, like a puppet. Yeah, we cannot even concentrate because we are so invested into life, yeah? so engaged in life that here there is a problem, there something is waiting, there I must do this, there he asked me to do, I remember all this, and I'm not free, I am not myself. But when I withdraw all those strings to myself, I become free, I get my mental energy back, I can focus now, and I can do any work you know, with dedication to, to higher consciousness in me. Vishayavi nivartanti niraharas ya dehinach rasavarjam rasopias ya paramdrishtva nivartate. This is a difficult shloka. We can discuss it. It's quite interesting in a way. If one ob abstains from food, the objects of sense cease to affect. But the affection itself of the sense. The rasa remains. The rasa also ceases when supreme is seen. We may withdraw from the object of sense, but there will be something in us like a need to enjoy life, to have the delight of existence. That is rasa inbuilt in it, which will eventually push us again to the same to the same attachment. <laughs> but when you see the Supreme, when the Supreme is seen, that rasa disappears, that urge to, uh, to receive the delight in existence, because it is all realized in that Supreme vision, in that contact, because seeing is a direct contact with the truth. So this is some kind of liberation the final liberation, which does not anymore generate that need of uh, love and being loved. Yatatohya pi kaunteya purushasya vipashitach indriyani pramathini haranti prasabham manaha. Even the mind of the wise man who labors for perfection is carried away by the vehement insistence of the senses, O son of Kunti. Yatatah, of the one who aspires, Kaunteya, O son of Kunti, Purushasya of Purusha, Vipaschitah, even being wise, Indriyani, Indriyas, Pramadhini, powerful, stirring, Haranti, take away suddenly, prasabham, forcefully, suddenly, manas, his mind. So these feelings, emotions, which, which comes to us suddenly can take away our mind. And we've been to that situation not once, yes? so we know how it is. Some people are getting on our nerves and <laughs> we are ready to, <laughs> to burst into the anger or into the judgment or into whatever, or despair. Tani sarvani samyamya yukta asi tamat paraha vashehi yasyendriyani tasya prajna pratishthita. And of the one who sits thinking about me or who dedicated himself to me, having controlled all these indriyas, whose indriyas are under control, his wisdom is being established firmly. So having brought all the senses under control, he must sit firm in yoga, wholly given up to me, for whose senses are mastered, of him the intelligence, intelligence is firmly established. 
And now he gives a very interesting definition of how we are shifting away, drifting away from our self-control. Dhyayata vishayan pumsach sangate shupajayate sangat sanjayate kamach kamat krodho bhijayate krodhat bhavati sammohach sammohat smriti vi brahmach smriti brahmshat buddhi nasho buddhi nashat pranashyati this we read with you before in one of our presentations so of the one thinking about the the objects of sense of the man who thinks about the object of sense sangah the attachment in them in the objects of sense upajayate is born sangat from that attachment sanjayate kamah the desire is born so first there has to be thinking, dwelling with the mind on the object of sense, and the dwelling generates the attachment. The attachment brings us or brings the karma, the desire. Kamat krodhach abhijayate. And from karma, from desire to have the object of sense, to possess it in some way, krodhach, the anger is born. Krodhat bhavati sammohach, and from the anger, the bewilderment, the comes into being. Sammohat, from the bewilderment, smriti vibhramach, the bewilderment of memory, of forgetfulness of who we are, what we are here for. Smriti bhramshat, from the the disturbance of the memory of what we are and what we are here to do, buddhi nashach, we disconnect from our higher mentality, buddhi nashat, and from that disconnection, pranashyati, man disappears, or perishes, is getting lost. So once he disconnected from his higher sense of being, from being conceptual, mental being, he is easily manipulated. And I think many uh, techniques today in this world are about that, how to make man stupid, <laughs> how to disconnect him from his buddhi, from his higher inner judgment. Yeah, especially this advertisement, if you see reclam, yeah, how to bring the most ordinary uh, animal desires in man, and then he can be easily manipulated. He doesn't know who he is. He is driven by desire. So he can buy the products which he doesn't need. <laughs> That's the, the whole idea. Okay, I will stop here at this point. If you have something to say, I'm, I think that this is the point where you can contribute with some thoughts. Please just share your thoughts. Otherwise, I'm speaking one way. I think the, the masters of the marketing and propaganda, they study very well this <laughs> couple of sloka. Yeah, I know about. Actually, you know that uh, advertisement came from the Soviet Union. It's a really interesting thing. They discovered it in the Soviet Union that they can brainwash people. They started with propaganda and propaganda turned to be the reclam for the marketing of, for the selling products. Before it wasn't like this. It was just an announcement that we sell these products. Yeah, So come and buy. But that to create a desire to brainwash you to yeah that that came later from propaganda, so it's a kind of propaganda, and it goes into politics also as you know, so 
you can say whatever you want, Soviet Union, I look at Russia today, I don't want to go into politics because there are many different opinions, but still look how people are manipulating with the brains of others, telling them whatever. And people listening to that as they, Goebbels said, and Goebbels was a propaganda man of uh, Nazis, the lie repeated many times becomes the truth. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You can repeat and repeat the same lie and it will become the truth for many people. So we are here within this psychological framework, how to, how to remain aware of an, our inner being, how not to deviate. We have to detach our selves from the object of sense. We have to be free from the, um, from the result, because result is that palm, you know, that fruit of action is actually the generator of attachment of our senses to the object of sense. So once we detach ourselves, we become free to choose whatever we want in life. We can have our own thoughts, our own opinions, our own truths, which are much better than to have somebody else's opinions about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Looks, looks very mechanical, isn't it? In a way, yeah, it's a mechanism of some kind. Yeah. Well, it has to be built up, I think. You cannot immediately get into that truth of yourself. You have to first disengage and then keep that disengagement for quite some time in order to build those inner relations, yeah? C contact with the inner light and then trust that light and follow it without being attached to the object of sense. Yes, Naomi, you wanted to say something? Okay, I saw your hand. I thought. But Ladamir, yes, the detachment can lead you to something that um, it's very important in your life to do. Um, you don't, you won't do it because you are trying to create detachment. So you may harm yourself or your family, or uh, it's like um, how much detachment towards what? I always feel that that has to be weighed a little bit. Right, it is not detachment from action. It's detachment mm -hmm. from the result which it may bring. Mm -hmm. You have okay. to do the same action, but mm -hmm. psychologically you have to be free from that, that you are determined by the, what has to happen, you have to make it. Yeah? Because mm -hmm. then it makes you very narrow and suffering. And you make, we make many mistakes when we do that. But once we have free, psychologically from that, we are bringing the inner light, the, the connection to the inner presence, uh, whatever is happening, we are offering it, yes? And the result is still not in our hands and will not be in our hands and we don't want it to be in our hands. We want it to be in the hands of the divine <laughs> anyhow. <laughs> so here we are. How can you be unhappy and how can anybody will be, uh, can be unhappy from this kind of uh, action. It's impossible. It will bring only the right uh, alignment of everyone and people will find right answers, will find right relations. It will be helpful to anyone within and without. You know, during mother's time, uh, we never felt we were unhappy, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like she was always there. She always took care of everything. Um, I can't even remember for years if I even shed tears for anything, you know. It's mm -hmm. just that her, her presence did everything for us, you know, for all mm -hmm. the children, you know. It was just a wonderful, wonderful memories, you know, those days, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the mother is. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So... so we can um, read a few more shlokas if you like, or you would, shall we stop here or finish this chapter? I can finish it today. Yes. Yes, Robert. 
please uh, so just um, unmute yourself and you cannot unmute yeah no i, I wasn't going to say anything okay oh so sorry i missed right. i just was going to comment too that uh, it's so interesting about and anger leads to bewilderment from a wilderness becomes loss of memory and by that the intelligence is destroyed from destruction of intelligence he perishes it, it's it's such a great truth there isn't it i mean when we get upset and anyway we can't think straight <laughs> and um, so it's a, another argument for in favor of equanimity but it's such an interesting observation in this context yeah and it looks like very simple truth mm -hmm which we somehow knew always, but couldn't really totally um, uh, make use of. I, I, it reminds me of Lion King. You remember Lion King, uh, this cartoon, um, when uh, the spirit of the father comes to Singha and, or to this, um, to the lion child, yeah, who is there and tells him, remember who you are remember it's the most important thing remember who you are yeah. that you are the king that you are the lord that you have the higher deeper consciousness luminous in you don't get lost in these nitty-gritties of these uh, jackals around you you know trying to scare you and to lead you astray somewhere and use you as food for themselves no remember your royal origin. I think this is a great, uh, and by the way, Disney in this way is a very powerful company, creates always very right alignment with the truth through those cartoons. It's interesting when you find in popular culture, a parallel um, or an expression of a deeper truth. Um, one thing that interests me sometimes is you know, traditional love songs and how if you, instead of imagining that being the object, the vision being a human being, <laughs> it being the divine and how these can be very transporting and, and very beautiful in that way. Yeah. So sometimes popular culture gives us some nice prizes. Right, we, because we are thinking in, in terms of archetypal forms anyhow, so we cannot deviate from the truth. So we will be using these symbols because we are all here seeking the truth, yeah? the truth of our existence being in the physical form or in the vital form, doesn't matter. It will still shine through and we can interpret it differently. We don't need to interpret it in the ordinary way. We can find in it the meaning, the deeper meaning in everything. Yeah. That's what you, what mother did, I think. And she taught us to do this, to see the deeper meaning in ordinary activities. Because we are all here, just symbols of this higher reality, as Shubhendra says. We are not what we seem. We, we represent some higher, truer reality here. Every one of us. I'm not Vladimir sitting here in this body. I'm a symbol of someone who is there eternal and infinite and blissful. Yeah? And I have to find him and to embody him here. So I have to refer to myself in that sense. Otherwise, I would be referring to myself to in, in, in the form of desire and some lower beings and trying to fulfill their needs rather than my own. So, great. Thank you for sharing. This is always great if somebody shares thoughts of this kind. Okay, so, Raga Dvesha Vi Muktaistu Vishayan Indriya Ischaran Atma Vaishyar Vidheyatma Prasadam Adhigachati but the one who is free from raga and dvesha, from um, liking and disliking, uh, the one who, whose 
uh, who follows the the object of sense, Vishayan Indriyaish Charan, uh, free from attachment to raga and dvesha, to liking and disliking, to preference. Atma Vaishyaich, but by the senses under control of the self. Vidhey Atma, he is whose Atman is, or the self is uh, established. Prasadam Adhigachati, he goes to the um, to the state of um, Prasadam, <laughs> to the state of bliss. Yeah? Um, here it is. It is by ranging over the object with the senses, but with the senses subject to the self, freed from liking and disliking, that one gets into a large and sweet clearness, that is prasadam, of soul and temperament in which passion and grief find no place. The intelligence of such a man is rapidly established. We know it. In those moments when we are in a right spirit, we are in that prasadam, in that sweet state of the soul, a sweet clearness of soul. Yes. And that sweet clearness of soul does not accept uh, liking and disliking. It looks at them as, as if they are the same. <laughs> uh, if you want to generate in me some liking of the vital or some disliking of the vital, it is impossible in that moment because I have already a state of consciousness which is not even admitting these as, as some kind of driving forces for me. So they look the same. So whether I like or dislike, it doesn't matter really much, <laughs> truly speaking, <laughs> because it doesn't really do anything true to me because I have already myself. And I want that presence. I want it to be all the time within me. And I kind of deviate from the preferences. I don't want to to praise someone or to blame someone, neither myself nor others anymore, because I can see how these things are not totally real. They're kind of uh, bringing me, taking me away from myself, as it were. Vladimir, the, what is the uh, real meaning of prasadam? How That's would you translate? He translates a sweet clearness of soul. <laughs> because the reason I ask that, you know, with a lot of the Indian rituals, uh, they hand out, you know, prasadam, what they call, you know. Right. Uh, so I was wondering how that, how that act connects with the, the, the meaning that you're uh, talking about, you know, it's, it's supposed to provide you with that connection with your soul? Prasadam, if I analyze this grammatically, since we spoke about uh, grammar and uh, root sad has a very interesting meaning. Uh, it is to sit, yes, which we know, siddhati, but uh, uh, to sit, to sit, but what is to sit? Hmm. It is to come to some kind of state of immobility or equilibrium or a state where you are no more uh, disturbed. Uh, you are arriving at peace, as it were, yeah? so to say. It's a kind of satisfaction of being in the state of equilibrium. And that is prasadam. And here it is used in this, look at this shloka, prasade sarva dukhkhanam hanir asyo pajayate, exactly what we discussed. So in him, the leaving of all the bad things, of all the dukhas, of all the sufferings is taking place when one is in that sweet state of the soul. 
prasanna chetasah, whose consciousness is in the state of sweetness, buddhih pari paryavateshthati, hyashu buddhih paryavateshthati, very fast, very quick, we, quickly we can establish our higher uh, mind. Our higher mind is quickly established in us when we are uh, in the consciousness of that sweetness. So we can reconnect to our higher spiritual self. Uh, so prasada is that settlement, that sweet settlement with oneself, as it were. And then, of course, prasad is used as uh, as that sweet <laughs> at the end of the, um, of the sacrifice or offering. So it's a part of offering. It is that what we get as a part of offering. Nasti buddhir ayuktasya, na cha yuktasya bhavana, na cha bhavayatah shantir, ashantasya kutah sukham. There is no buddhi of the one who is not composed or united, who is not in yoga, there is no higher mind. bhavana, And of the one who is not composed, who is not yoked, whose elements, who, whose uh, different members of consciousness and being are not composed properly and united, he doesn't have bhavana consecration or concentration. Bhavana is something which supports our becoming or meditation. Nacha bhavayatah shantih. And of the one who is not uh, concentrated, there is no peace. Ashantasyah kutah sukham. And of the one who doesn't have peace, where is happiness? So this is again another lineage of categories, psychological, which could be interesting for psychologists. Yeah? So for one who is not in yoga, there is no intelligence, no concentration of thought. For him without concentration, there is no peace. And for the unpeaceful, how can there be happiness? Now we can understand what peace means. Peace is some positive state of equilibrium, positive and active state of equilibrium, not passive. Uh, in the Vedic literature, sham is used in the state of bliss. Sham no mitra sham varunaha. May there be sham for us, O mitra, O varuna. Sham means blissful state of equilibrium, in which actually spirit and our consciousness are united, as it were. So, of the one who has no buddhi, there is. So, nasti buddhir ayuktasya. Of the one who is not composed, united, there is no buddhi. Nacha yuktasya bhavana. Of the one who is not composed, there is no concentration. So, we can't concentrate. We can't do anything. We can't really fix our consciousness on anything. Nacha bhavayatak shantih. And of the one who is not concentrated, there is no equilibrium, active equilibrium, or reconciliation of the spirit and consciousness within us. Ashantasyah kutak sukham. Of the one who has no peace, there is no happiness. Indriyanam cha charatam yanmano nu vidhiyate tadasya harati prajnam Vayurnavam Ivam Bhasi. We have few more shlokas here. Most probably I will stop here and we will continue from 68 next time. Uh, next time also I will look into these shlokas from Sri Rubindu's point of view and we will revive them. I also would recommend that you read essays on the Gita on these topics. And that means chapter 9, 8, 9, and 10. And um, then we can discuss how she went viewed those elements. OK.
Okay, I'm closing for today with mantra. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santo Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Ario Namaste. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you. See, See you me. next week. See you for Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you.